Today I'm sharing how to get your blog to actually show up in the Google search results and how long it takes. There are 10 steps in this process. So I am walking you through all 10 steps now. Step number one is to decide your blog post topic. What are you actually going to create a blog post about? What I suggest you do if you have paid products is I suggest you create blog posts around the topic of your paid products. So what kind of results do people want to get with your paid products? And this is what you should create blog posts about that lead people from the blog post to your paid products. If you don't have paid products, then you might want to advertise other products as an affiliate and get paid for that. So I would suggest sticking to your niche, sticking to the topic and posting content around what your audience is actually interested in. So if you have a green smoothie meal plan that helps people to lose weight, then you would probably want to post green smoothie recipes, how to make a green smoothie, that kind of thing. Step number two is to get ideas for your blog post. So even though you might have an idea of the kind of things you want to post about, you will want to get inspiration from other people. So where I suggest you go for inspiration is YouTube and search for some content or some accounts that are posting content that you like and that you think would work well in your niche and attract the same kind of audience that you also want to attract. So when you're on YouTube, type in the keyword that your niche is all about, say for example, green smoothies, and then click on one of the accounts in the list. So for example, say we want to click on this one, the domestic geek, then click on videos at the top and then you can click on sort by most popular and from here you can see the most popular content so you can get ideas from here so you might want to post around healthy breakfast smooth smoothies and see if there's anything else that might relate to green smoothies or weight loss maybe five healthy green smoothie recipes five green smoothie recipes, five healthy smoothie recipes. So this will give you ideas of the kind of content that could work for you because you can see how many views each one has got. So you know that that content is definitely popular. I'm not saying copy these content directly and you will definitely want to realize that not everything translates from YouTube onto blog very well, but it definitely gives you ideas of the kind of posts that you can post yourself. You can also search on Google and see what else is already popular and post similar kinds of things. So get ideas from what's already on Google, what's already on YouTube. You can also go to Pinterest and you can search for the same things in Pinterest. Pinterest is a great way to get ideas for different posts as long as your audience is already on Pinterest because it's very visual and there are lots of ideas and the ones at the top are the most popular. So you might want to create similar types of blog post yourself. Step number three is to choose the main keywords for your blog post. Now there are many different extensions that you can use and different paid keyword tools that will tell you the estimated number of searches for this keyword per month. However, I would suggest using some caution when looking at these figures because the problem is that most people will end up posting content on exactly the same topics as everyone else and it leads to very generic types of content. So if you type in the keywords green smoothies, you can see that this particular tool is telling me that 27,000 people per month are searching for this keyword in America, but it's not necessarily the right kind of content that you should be creating because people who are just typing in green smoothie on its own probably don't know what a green smoothie is. So you would need to make it a little bit longer than just one or two main keywords. So how can you make that a bit longer? 
Google will auto populate and give you some more ideas. If you type a space bar after your ideas, it will give you some more ideas. So you could have green smoothie recipes, green smoothie diet, green smoothie near me, green smoothie for weight loss, green smoothie bowl, green smoothie ingredients. And there are so many different types of content. You can start typing in all of the letters of the alphabet to see what comes up. You can also type in the star and that gives you more ideas as well. You can also type in words before the keyword and see what comes up there as well. So that is the best way to see what kind of keywords you should post on your blog post. And just because a keyword tool tells you that a particular search has zero number of people searching for it per month, doesn't mean to say that this is not a good keyword phrase to use. Use your common sense if it's related to your product, if you think that your audience needs to know it, I would go ahead and post it anyway. This is the most important step to tell Google what is the topic of your blog post. Step number four is to make sure that you choose keywords that people are actually searching for and how you tell whether people are actually searching for it is does it autocomplete in Google? So does Google bring up an, a drop down list with those words that you want to put in your blog post? If it does, it's likely that people are searching for it, even if the keyword tool is telling you that it's got zero results. Like for example, green smoothie recipes for beginners, it, this tool is telling you that nobody is searching for this per month, but I very much doubt that is true. And I have proven it many, many times myself because I have created a lot of different blog posts that say that they have zero search results and I've actually got thousands of page views as a result of posting that post to my website. So I would suggest ignoring the keyword tools that tell you that things have zero results and just using your own common sense. But as long as it auto populates in Google, there is a good chance that someone is actually searching for it. Step number five is to scan the marketplace for contributors. So say for example, you wanted to post a blog post called green smoothie recipes without fruit. When you are new to your particular niche, I do suggest that you have a look at some of the blog posts that are ranking at the top and just see what kind of content they have on there and see how long the posts are. As you can see that a lot of green smoothie posts have a lot of images, so it is probably a good idea if you do something similar because that is what the marketplace ex expects. You can also click on Word Counter Plus if you've got that Google extension installed and this will tell you how many words are in this particular post as well. So this one is scrolling into two posts. So I'm just going to highlight only the blog at the top and then click Word Counter Plus and it's telling me that this post has 778 words in it. So this is what you can expect from recipes that rank. So as long as your post is a similar length to that, um, definitely not less, then you can probably end up ranking for this, but you would have to create something that's better than this. However, I personally when I first go into a niche, I do have a look and see what's out there. But now that I've been in my niche for a long time, I don't look at other people's blog posts before I post my own. And there's so many good reasons why you shouldn't do this. And the main reason is because you'll end up just creating a copycat version of the blog post that's already there rather than using your own intuition and creating something completely from scratch. So what I like to do is I like to put my points that I'm going to talk about in my own blog post draft before I've even had a look to see what's out there because that has come completely from my own intuition. Like I might have thought of seven different smoothies that I'm going to put in my blog post but then if I saw this one maybe I would have put eight instead or nine instead but I would suggest just using your own intuition instead of looking at other people's content all the time because otherwise you won't you won't create something completely new 
you'll just create something that's just like other people. So I don't suggest you do this every single time you create a blog post. Don't check out what's already on there. And as far as I'm concerned, we're all contributors. There's no such thing as competition because each of these blog posts won't just be ranking for this particular keyword. They'll be ranking for maybe up to a thousand different keywords that people will be typing in. Like people might type in smoothie without fruit with spinach in it, for example, and they might find the exactly the exact same one, which they have. So that just goes to prove that you can type in completely different keywords and still end up with the same blog post as a result. So Google knows what's in your blog post and that's why you shouldn't worry about competition because yours can rank for completely different keywords. Step number six is to write a catchy title. So you wouldn't just want to call your blog post smoothie without fruit with a spinach recipe. You would want to base it on some kind of template and I have lots of templates in my blog post that is associated with this content. So click underneath this video, go to my blog post and you will find some great templates in there that you can use for pretty much all blog posts. The title is the most important thing. So you need to make sure you definitely get it right. Eight no fruit smoothies when you're serious about, we don't know what that actually says because Google cuts it off after around about 60 characters they cut off the title. So whatever you have after that, we won't get to find out about it. Same with that one, vegetable only smoothie recipe that have no sugar spikes, but you can get the general gist as to what the blog post is about. However, that one is much more punchy. Five non-fruit smoothies for when you want to cut out sugar. That feels like a complete title, so I'm much more likely to click on that one personally. Maybe this one is on its way up and will end up getting to the top if it happens to be a better blog post that's much more helpful for everybody else. Another thing that's helpful is a website that loads quickly. And if you have lots and lots of really big images on, this can really slow things down. If you have lots of banner ads on your website and adverts that can also slow down your website. So you need to be careful about the page speed because this can really put people off, especially when they are using their phones, which most people do these days. So that's another ranking factor is how quickly your website loads up. Step number seven is to write a helpful, comprehensive, full length blog post on the topic. So most blog posts are round about 2000 words long that rank in the top of Google. It's different for recipes because recipes tend to be shorter, but if you have content around a particular topic, usually the average is about 2000 words long, just you an idea about how much effort you need to put into your blog posts. But I would suggest don't focus too much on the word count. I would just focus on making the post as long as it needs to be to get people the results they want to get without any additional fluff or wasting people's time. So that is a rule of thumb. When people want a recipe, they generally just want the recipe, but you probably will have to explain a little bit more about what the recipe actually is before you get to the content. But if you are just creating a roundup of different recipes, there is no need to create a lot of text. People mainly just want to see the photos. They want to see what their recipes look like before they click over and see somebody else's smoothie recipe. And then there might be a little bit more text in that particular recipe, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It just needs to be as long as it needs to be to get people the results. Step number eight is to make your blog post easy to read. The worst thing you can do is just post a massive big wall of text that makes it really daunting. Nobody wants to read a massive big wall of text. So what I suggest you do is you press enter after one or two full stops and don't make your paragraphs longer than one to two sentences because otherwise it's just going to look too daunting. So what I suggest you do is break up your text, have lots of white space, break up your text with images, with videos, and also put headings in, headings, lists, bullet points, bold words, put links in, and this makes it easy to scan and easy to read. Number nine, make your blog posts engaging so people actually read them. 
the best thing that I can suggest to make your blog posts engaging is to include some kind of personal story. Talk about yourself so that people know that you've got the results that they want and that you're a real person and that they can actually trust you. So the best thing you can do is to use the word I. So this particular blog post has the word I 44 times and this person is saying that I drink a green smoothie every day and have done for almost a decade. So this makes it very trustworthy that I immediately feel like this person has got the results I want and I trust them to be able to tell me what to do. So why do you need to make your blog posts engaging? Surely when you just go into Google and you type in your keyword and surely it's just the best title that wins. Well, no, it's not because Google actually does know if somebody is engaging with your content and they know this because say, for example, they have typed in something that they want like green smoothie for weight loss and they are looking for somebody who's talking about how to get how to lose weight with green smoothies say for example that somebody clicked on the first result that they wanted and they just didn't trust this website for some reason they just didn't like it they just feel like I just there's just not enough personal contact I feel like it's too generic and I just feel like I'm not going to get the results or maybe they're looking for something specific like calories in each particular smoothie and this blog post doesn't give them the calories then and this one actually does give you the calories so this is just proves the point as to why this one is a popular one to be at number one but say for example they didn't have the calories and they think well how am I going to lose weight because it hasn't even broken down how, how many calories are in the smoothie so what they do is they click the back button and they think right I'm going to click on the next one down and see if, if that particular post has got what I want so what happens is Google knows how long the person has spent on your website and they know that they've clicked the back button and that they're look, still looking further down the search results so that shows to Google that they haven't got what they wanted from your blog post. So when Google are doing their tests, they want to make sure that people are actually sticking on your website and they get the results you want. So that is why it's really important to create an engaging website. And step number 10 is to share your blog post online and link back to it. Now, many years ago, people got very obs obsessed about creating backlinks to their website and some people are still very obsessed with this however Google knows when you are creating unnatural links when you are trying to force links that aren't natural when you are trying to create websites just to put links to other websites and they know that and it's obvious and they will not rank your blog post highly if you are creating unnatural links so I suggest only creating links where it would be normal and appropriate to link back to your blog post so what can you do to create links back to your blog post I suggest you share your blog post Post on all of your social media, share it on your Facebook, your LinkedIn, share it on Pinterest, create a video about it, put a link back from your video to your blog post, create a podcast about it if it's appropriate, link back from your podcast to your blog post, email your list about it, create a link from your email list to your blog post, share it on you, in your community. If you have a Facebook group, share it in there as well. You can even run paid ads to your blog post if you want to do that, if you've got the budget to do that. And another thing I recommend you do is you link from your existing content to your new content. So find at least five different blog posts that you already have that you can create links from those blog posts to your new blog. And that creates like a network of links it makes it much easier for Google to crawl through your website and to see how everything is linked together. It also highlights to Google that this is popular content because you've linked to it in numerous different places. So all of this is signals to Google that your website is popular because you've tried to make an effort to share it other places. You can't control what links you get from other people but if you just create good quality content then it is much more likely to get linked to from other people and shared in numerous different places so these are all indications to google that your blog post is popular but like i said don't go overboard because google can tell step number 10 is to check where your 
traffic is actually coming from to check how many to check how much traffic you are actually getting from Google so you can see how much traffic you are getting from Google in your Google Analytics if you've not set up Google Analytics I highly recommend you do because you can see all of the stats relating to your blog post so once you have put your website in Google Analytics you can click um, on audience acquisition and then all traffic and then source medium this shows exactly where your traffic is coming from so this shows that three million of the page views of the sessions were coming from google slash organic which means they were coming straight from the search listing so this is one of my websites and as you can see most of the traffic came from google search a lot of it came from pinterest a lot came from direct Yahoo, Bing, Facebook and other websites as well. What you can do is you can also drill down into individual blog posts to see how much traffic each individual blog post is getting. So to do that you can click on behavior, site content and all pages and this will show your most popular content at the top and you can you can create more rows and have a look at more blog posts or you can search individually for the URL of the blog post just to bring up individual content so you can see that this shows exactly where I'm getting my traffic to at this particular point snapshot in time so my blog post how I lost 56 pounds with the green smoothie diet is the most popular blog post at this point in time getting over 1 million page views there 20 ways to make homemade meal replacement shakes for weight loss got over 700,000 page views so you can check to see how popular your blog posts are in Google Analytics. So how long does it take to actually rank your blog posts in Google and appear on the first page of Google? Now I'm going to give you some information but the true answer is it depends. However, it normally takes between one month and 24 months so usually up to around two years to actually get to the final position in Google however you can start to see results after just one month I went back to the very start of my website kathkyle.com which is my latest brand my personal brand to have a look at how long it took to start getting traffic and in the first month I was getting each blog post that I'd published was getting between 1 and 30 page views because Google was just starting to do its initial tests and it did take about five months before I was starting to see that the, some of the blog posts were getting over 100 page views and then one of them branched out within six or seven months it was getting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 page views so it just kept on going up like that because that was my most popular blog post and every month when I publish new blog posts I, my blog posts were getting more and more popular gaining like they were going up from 100 page views the next month 200 page views next month 300 and they were going up like that so that gives you an idea about how long it takes to rank content it also does depend on how old the website is as to how much authority it has and how trustworthy it is in the eyes of Google so my website now because I've had my website one and a half years it's seen as more of an authority so now when I'm publishing content I am noticing it's starting to get like 300 to 500 page views in the same month that I've actually published it so you don't always need to wait that long but the longer you keep publishing your blog posts the better your results are going to be because the more trustworthy you are so now that you know how to actually show up on Google would you like to know how to build a tribe of millions now the best way that I have found to build a large audience is to create a magnetic movement and I have created a masterclass that shows you exactly how to create this magnetic movement it shows you how to hook your audience with transformational habits how to reach millions by starting a movement and how to match your marketing strategy to your personality and if you would like to get this masterclass which is free for a limited time you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash 
millions or click the link underneath this video and you will be able to get that. This masterclass is actually part of one of my paid programs called Dream Business Movement and I break down exactly how to start a magnetic movement there. So now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.